Hello everyone and welcome back to Channel Dad Brian Lape Reads because, you know, I can't read worth of crap. And, uh, you know, I've covered some things with uh, um, bones and stuff and DNA studies that have been done in the Middle East and different places. And this one, I can't, th this is what gets me. I cannot believe scientists are surprised by this. I, it, it, it boggles my mind. It's like, what history book are you not reading, you morons? So history books typically depict Vikings. And, you know, the history books will need to be updated <clears throat> uh, as blue, blonde. This is a modern interpretation. Burly men sailing the North Atlantic coast to pillage wherever they set foot on land. Just just go to any Scandinavian country. Yes, there are a lot of blondes, but you find redheads, brunettes, dark haired, uh, darker skin. You know, I'm not saying, you know, African, but some, pay, you know, I, I just. OK, so let's just go on. Uh, genetic study of D, uh, Viking DNA is flipping much of this history on its head. In the largest genetic study of gen, uh, Viking DNA ever, scientists have found that Vikings and their dysphoria are actually much more genetically diverse than we thought and were not necessarily all part of a homogenous background. See, okay, I, I know people are going to be like, calm down, calm down. It's just like ancient Egypt. Egyptians, this whole concept of race is a modern myth okay it did not exist in the past we find um chinese skeletons you know with a, with a blonde hair and red hair and we would get we go oh my god people identified by their culture so ancient egypt was a culture and sometimes they had uh ethiopian oriented kings sometimes they were semitic sometimes they were hamitic i mean it it, it changed okay and Sometimes they were black. Sometimes there was something in between and it didn't matter as long, you know, it, 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 it was a culture. You became part of the culture. Your, your skin tone had nothing to do with it. Sequencing the genomes of over 40, uh, 40, 400 Viking men, women, and children from an ancient burial sites. Researchers found evidence of genetic influence from Southern Europe. I would expect that. And Asia. Now that did kind of surprise me a little bit, uh, in Viking DNA dating back to before the Viking age. So, but there's a lot of evidence through Siberia and there was a lot of Asian influence into Northern Europe through what is now Russia and the steppe. Uh, there's, I've seen articles previously about what does Russia mean? You know, the, the, uh, the Rus, uh, they may have been the invaders. They may have been the, you know, it's, it's very interesting. Um, the authors also note the individuals not related to Vikings genetically, such as, um, uh, a native Pictish people of Scotland and Ireland sometimes received tra traditional I Viking burials, which I've actually seen some of this evidence on Time Team and Helen Geek has talked about it, suggesting that being a Viking was uh, not so much about spe specific family roots, but about a sense of internal identity. Again, yes, it's culture. And in sometimes uh, some of the burials that they have found in England um, were people who basically admired, you know, they acquired wealth and then so they had a, a mishmash of things that they were buried with. And uh, that's not surprising either. Uh, in the study, it just means that you know, these cultures weren't um, apart from one another. Uh, you know, the, there's there's some evidence that depict that the Gauls were all the way down into what is now Greece, okay, at one time, and maybe even further east. And we just think of them running around in, in, in well, we talk, I mean, Gaul is what became France. And just look at the place names, Galatia and things like that. There, there's, there's, and granted, you know, they, I think ancient peoples moved around a heck of a lot more than we want to believe um, that they're all just off on their own, doing their own thing uh, in the study. You know, this is why you find you know, every time they'll find something in like in Germany, that's from the you know middle East or something that they're, they're astonished. I'm like, yeah, that, that piece is probably very valuable and probably changed hands a zillion times. Anyway, in the study published Wednesday in the journal Nature, an international team of researchers uh, reports finding from their six year long study. OK, blah, blah, blah. Um, dating about Bronze Age to early modern period, so 1600 AD, so 2400 BC. That's a good good range when comparing the genetic material of these ancient samples with uh, 3,855 present-day individuals from regions from like the UK, Denmark, and Sweden. And the data from 1118 individuals, uh, they discovered more intermixing of genetic material than they originally <laughs> because they they have this brain dead notion that uh, ancient cultures did not mix. And they did. I don't know how we have for decades seen the evidence has been presented and people still refuse to believe it. Lead author and director of the Lundbeck Foundation Geo uh, Genetics Center at the University of Copenhagen. 
uh, SK, SK Vilashev, Shiv, Vilashev, Vilashev, yep, Vilashev, right? Something like that. SK Vilashev said in a statement, we have this uh, image of well-connected Vikings mixing with each other, trading and going on raiding parties to fight kings across Europe because this is what we see on television. Yep. Uh, but genetically, we have shown for the first time that there wasn't, uh, that it wasn't that kind of world. It was that kind of world and the mixing. The study changes the perception of a Viking actually is. No one could have predicted these significant gene flows into Scandinavia from Southern Europe and Asia happening before and during the Viking Age. I, just look at people. Go to Lapland and look at the people there. Okay? They definitely have uh, some some mixing of Southern Europe and uh, Asian. Based on these results, uh, it says that well-known imagery of Vikings being blonde and blue-eyed um, yeah, this is comic books. Okay. And, and maybe over time, a lot of people were blonde hair and blue eyed, you know, good grief. Uh, what they find one of the first hunches that the study was able to confirm was the final destination of different threads of Viking migration from modern day Scandinavia. Uh, so Danish Vikings cropped up in England while Norwegian Viking DNA was found in Ireland, Iceland, and Greenland. Um, that pretty much makes sense. Uh, and see, and then there are people like Alan Geek who will say this didn't happen. We'll see the Danish Vikings. So now you're talking Friesland, North Free, you know, you're talking Northern Europe, um, the Utes, the Angles, those were all in basically from areas that became some of that area, especially further North became Denmark. It was the Danemark. It was the Danemark, uh, March, uh, the land, uh, between the, um, uh, between the Danes. Uh, the researchers write that this, uh, this unexpected discovery suggests that the complex settling, trading and raiding networks during these times resulted in communities of mixed answers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Duh. Even more the study, uh, anal analysis shows that this mixed ancestry was taking place, but even before the so-called, yeah, yeah, not surprising. Um, you know, there were, there were all kinds of things, you know, we had the Hun invasion into Europe. Uh, so there's your Asian influence. You had, you know, the Visigoths and the Goths that, that sacked Rome well before the Viking Age. Um, you had some of those people may have swept as far as the Caucasus Mountains. You, you have people sweeping in from what is essentially Western Asia, if you will, uh, or very Eastern um, uh, Europe. But, you know, we, we think of Asia and Europe being separated by the, the Strait of uh, the Bosphorus Strait. But land-wise, if you go north of the Black Sea, the, the land is, is still connected. So, again, you're coming from uh, the steppes of, of Russia, what is now known, you know, Sib and not Siberia is too far to the north. But, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, where, where do the Visigoths end up? They end up in parts of southern France and Spain after they sack Rome, a little bit of Italy. You have some of these uh, people pushing up through Italy into the mountains, through the Alps, and into uh, Gaul. It, it, what would surprise me is if there was any any actual purity in this. Uh, and you could have a raid, you could kill the men, you could take the women captive, especially if they're very young, um, and all they know is they, they grow up knowing their, their new family, and they don't remember the old ones. Their DNA mixes because they intermarry with whomever. Um, you know, come on, you know, or, or people come together to, to form a group because they're starving and they're having problems. Maybe there's famine, maybe there's, uh, diseases that, you know, half the people are dying and they, they join together. It's not, it's not recorded history, right? They don't even talk about it. And it's, I don't know, 300 BC and they're going to be intermixing. I, I, what would surprise me is if these weren't, didn't happen. Um, many levels have high, many Vikings have high level of non-Scandinavian ancestry, both within and outside Scandinavia. Well, okay. Uh, gene flow across. Yeah. Just like the languages. Okay. These, you have these language groups that are, that are very influenced. Um, even before the church shows up, you have parts of Germanic tribes that have a heavy uh, Latin influence in language because they're along the, the borders with, uh, the Roman empire and stuff. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So here we have a female burial. All right. So, and some Vikings uh, weren't of genetic Viking descent at all. Research found that when analyzing a Viking burial site in Orkney, Scotland, despite being put to rest in a traditional Viking style, including swords and other Viking memorabilia, when sequencing, uh, they found the two individuals buried at the site were in fact Pictish or early Irish or early Scottish descent. Researchers write that this uh, discovery suggests that being a Viking was not, yeah, quite possibly. Um, again, and who knows? They could have... Uh, 
depending, you could have had a raiding party. I think some of what happened in England, you had a time where there was some wars, there was also some famine. And so some places, the villages were, had been deserted for 100 or 200 years before the Vikings show up. And then they become farmers in the area. And who knows? Maybe they maybe they do raid. Maybe you have some local picks that um, are starving and just join them. Um, this, this concept of, you know, an outsider, it, I mean, that happens, but there are times when people will band together too. And, and again, this whole concept of race is a very, very modern thing, I think. And, uh, that's part of the problem is they're looking through the lens of modern stupidity. The researchers write that the discovery suggests that being a Viking was done. Okay, I already read that results changed perception. Um, this has been known before. Cause I, like I said, Helen Geek mentioned this years ago on the time team episode. I don't remember that show has been off the air for a long, long time. Um, and then I, like she also talked about, uh, there was a, there's some been some burials where you get a mixture of various types of Viking memorabilia. But again, too, uh, you know, it may be that, uh, uh, you know, maybe they found things, you know, they did raid, uh, they did dig up people. They did, if, you know, something started a road and Hey, there's a sword coming out of the ground. You, you never know, right? Exactly how these things come together. But if it was in a Viking burial ground and there were several burials and you got Viking, Viking Pictish, that ought to tell you that, that for some man, some way those people joined that, uh, group. In addition to providing a more nuanced look at this transitional period of history, this new genetic insight can also help scientists better understand how uh, different traits uh, like immunity, pigmentation, and metabolism. I mean, that's a, that's a big one, too. Uh, selected for across, yeah, uh, expansion of populations during the Viking Age was a far-flung transformation in the world history. Uh, here we see sequencing genomes of 442 humans from archaeological sites across Europe and Greenland. Okay, uh, depth of about a meter. We find the Viking period involved gene flow into Scandinavia from the south and east. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Um, again, what is south and east of Scandinavia? You're starting to get into the Baltic states, and it's not long before you're into the steppes of Russia. I, I, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say that. And then you're into um, Asian territories and uh, the Huns and um, the Cossacks. What was the other one? Because I know Attila was, T, uh, yeah, he was, but anyway, uh, we observed genetic structure in within Scandinavia, the diversity of hotspots in the south and restricted gene flow within Scandinavia. We find evidence for a major influx of Danish ancestry into England. That makes sense. It's right across the channel, a, especially with the flow of um, the way that the winds flowed. It's actually easier to go down and then come, come across. Uh, a Swedish influence uh, into the Baltic and Norwegian influence into Ireland. So they probably went around each other. Additionally, we see subs uh, substantial ancestry from elsewhere in Europe settling, entering Scandinavian during the Viking Age. Um, yeah, probably displaced, uh, things going on. Um, you, you know, we, we don't, you can have towns appear and disappear in 100 years, and we don't know to go look for them. Uh, who knows? They could be at the bottom of, of a riverbed now, right? They settle along the riverbed. Um, they have, you know, uh, for three or four generations, things go well, something happens, there's a blight, there's, there's a war or whatever. Um, remnants of a few people, you know, maybe they hear about the further North or something or further West or whatever, and they move. And then, uh, something happens with the river, right? A couple different types of floods happen. The river channel changes. It could go over that site. It could be miles away. Uh, just different things like that. We have that. Um, and even, with the Roman invasion of, of England in the early first century, there's areas in Holland that they were using, that the rivers moved, right? They find these boats, what used to be the riverbed of the Rhine River. Now it's three, four kilometers away. Um, by comparing with modern populations, we find that pigmentation associated uh, Loki, Loki, Loki uh, have undergone strong population differentiation during the past millennium and trace positivity selected, okay, including... Uh, lactose, lactase persistent allele of LCT. I don't know really, really what all this means, but um, include that Viking dysphoria was characterized by sub, uh, substantial trans regional engagement. No kidding. Distinct populations include and influence the gen genetic uh, makeup, genomic makeup of different regions of Europe and Scandinavia. Like I said, too, I remember seeing something in early Russian history where. Um, there's some speculation that the the Rus were Vikings. Uh, that they that was part of, they couldn't figure out if if the Russians that are there now were 
people who were there and they defended or it was the Rus, uh, the Vikings who came upstream. And there was a lot of, of that with Viking traders where they'd go upstream into these into the Volga and other rivers and um, then trade. And if you look at a map, especially the ancient flow, sometimes these things are just a few miles apart and you'll get um, various groups that are in between these rivers that trade and people will just trade goods and, and they don't necessarily have to travel all the way to the east to get something. It just kind of changes hands through time and they get back in their boats and they go... I think a lot of it just depends on uh, their temperament and the warlord. You know, we're going to go uh, battle something. Uh, this is what you get in Northern Europe. This is what you get in France, the Normans, the Northmen, um, Vikings who settle in in France and become farmers. Hey, it, this is, you know, not, I, 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 to me, I don't understand why they didn't already have this concept. And, um, and I would agree the perception has to change because, um, I don't know, this is from... Uh, Jeans and Viking actually made them brunette instead of a classically blonde and blue eyed. Yeah, but we also don't have cameras. We also don't know. You know, this is like when they do a genetic study of some towns in England and, and they find that 85% of the town goes back to one guy from 300 years ago. You know, it just the way different things, people will have kids and then they die, those those um, trees die out, right? For some reason, the kids don't have children or they get killed or they die of disease or there's, again, a war of tribe comes through and wipes out a whole village right there's a lot of family history just gone in an afternoon so uh i'm glad that the scientists are finally kind of getting with the program and understanding that the ancient world was far more involved and intertwined than we want to believe and um the stuff that makes good writing and good comic books is not necessarily based in truth uh or it's it's based in truth but it's an oversimplification um, you know, I, the one I did about Israel, they, you know, they find that this DNA, uh, both Israelis and Palestinians. And I'm like, well, no kidding. They were all in the same area for thousands of years. And, you know, people want to uh, believe that the Israelis just kind of fell out of the sky like 700 years ago, some such bull crap. Now you, you go back to, um, the pre-Semitic times and, um, you know, the, the Yahoo, the God Yahoo, who, who believed that became Yahweh. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say that uh, the Israeli religion came out of that and then be surprised that the people um, share genes, you know, <clears throat> because that would make perfect sense because that means they came out of that area. Duh. So anyway, I, it's good. You know, I, I don't want to be sound like I'm just being a, an a-hole here, but I'm glad that at least science is kind of catching up to what, uh, you know, the history books that I, the history that I was taught was a lot of the stuff was intermixed. <clears throat> and I'm sure you had some Viking clans that were very pure and other ones that were mixtures of all kinds of people. And again, they, they would capture people, take people as slaves. They may take people as, as who knows, maybe they free a slave and they, they join the clan and they have children by some mechanism. You know, you know, I mean, the mechanism. I mean, they could be male or female, right? Um, they may, you know, there's a lot of, of evidence that many um, slave owners in the state, you know, what became the United States, had children with their, their black slaves. And so you get a, a mixed race uh, of, well, say even I know it, but a mixture of, of genetic information. You get them from um, several different, what are now West African countries that were just kingdoms and things now. And so there seems to be this blend. Um I, there are people that were isolated, Easter Island, some other places, uh, some of the, the immigrants early in, into maybe even pre-Clovis culture in the state, in the uh, U.S. and well, North and South America. Who knows exactly where they're from? Because we haven't dug deep enough. We hit Clovis and we stop and then someone finally dug, dug deeper and went, oh, wait a minute, it goes back even further than Clovis. So it's, <clears throat> it's like the Etruscans in um, in northern Italy that are more or less wiped out by the Romans. So Things happen like that, unfortunately. So being mixed, I guess, not surprised. Anyway, I'm very, very long-winded on this. What do you think? Do you Are you surprised by this? Is this kind of what you would expect anyway? Uh, do you think it's just not a, a, a wide enough, a big enough sample? Maybe if they double or triple this, they'll get, um, <clears throat> say, better understanding of the flow. In other words, people come in and out of these groups. Uh, more evidence of that, that would be interesting. And remember, we're looking at the DNA of the people who survived, right? Their DNA passed along uh, by various means and routes and who knows. So there we go. Thank you very much. I'll, we'll put a link. This is on inverse.com. I forgot to say thanks for clicking subscribe and thanks for being with me on this journey of discovery. And we'll see you. Goodbye.
All right. Uh, three, two. Yeah, I think this should work. We got double check. All right, double check. Yeah. Love the ad blocker. This, this page is horrible to try loading any other browser. It doesn't have an ad, ad blocker. It's unbelievable. All right, three, two, one.